Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in this video, we're going to feature our 1974 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia that uh, was converted to electric in eight days. And what we're going to highlight in this episode is the upgrade from the Curtis 1231C controller that was originally installed in the vehicle to the Evnetics Soliton Jr. Now, the uh, reason we originally went with the Curtis controller was this conversion was designed to feature our commuter package. It features 44 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cells. It features the Impulse 9 or the Warp 9 motor from NetGain and the uh, Curtis 500 amp controller with uh, possibly of making upgrades and all those things uh, most commonly the controller to uh, a liquid cooled controller like the Evnetics. The reason we left this this way was we were showing the the base package which installed is under $20,000. Going to the Evnetics upgrade, it puts you up at the $22,000 price tag. And that's what we charge to install this in, in your vehicle. Uh, just to purchase the package without installation is less, of course. So anyway, uh, when we did this vehicle, it was uh, its main intention was to uh, highlight the commuter package and to be a demonstration vehicle uh, at different uh, public appearances. Well, as it's turned out, it's become a favorite vehicle to drive. And uh, last year, we drove it over 16,000 miles. It currently has over 17,000 miles on it uh, in the less than 14 months since we converted it. So uh, we've run it hard. Uh, we live in a rural, remote area. Most of our driving is uh, on the interstate. Uh, up and down, uh, elevation changes. No real steep grades, uh, typically, but it's, it's varying terrain nonetheless. And then we get extremes in, in heat. Uh, we've had 117 degrees this year, a couple days, so. Um, and it's recently been running, been running 106 to 110. So, Cruising around at 75 miles an hour on the interstate, up and down, at uh, those kind of temperatures is very tough on an air-cooled anything. And uh, so the little Curtis is, uh, is working hard. And so the Curtis is controlled, or cooled, I should say, through a heat sink. And they recommend a 12 inch by 12 inch by quarter inch heat sink. We use the heat sink also as a component mounting board and so typically in the VWs uh, as well as the uh, rear engine Porsches we run a 12 by 24 by quarter inch. But this one because of its extreme use uh, a while back uh, we featured this in a video. We added a chill plate to the back side of our heat sink behind the controller to add or to aid in cooling. And it made a difference. It, it, it really helped. But it's just a, not, not enough for the extremes in which this vehicle is operated. And so uh, the other morning, the Curtis gave up the ghost. So we did some testing to make sure that that's what it was, that it was the Curtis. We, we checked our voltages. We checked to make sure that we had voltage um, at the KSI uh, connection. Uh, we checked our uh, throttle, make sure that was working properly. And so 
everything points to the Curtis as being DOA. So anyway, it's the perfect excuse to feature an upgrade. So we wanted to do it uh, before uh, the refuel event at Laguna Seca next year anyway. So we're just doing it a little sooner than anticipated. Which will be great. We still have uh, a couple months of summer ahead of us where we have 100 plus degree temperatures. And so we'll get to give you the comparison uh, between the Curtis and the Epnetics. Side by side, basically, same vehicle, same train, same routines. And let you know what we think and how they compare. And we're also going to, in this video, show you what's involved in making an upgrade. There's a lot of the Curtises running around out there, and I think there's a lot of them that are running in marginal uh, circumstances where people are pushing the little Curtis beyond what it's really designed to do. So what's involved in making the changes? Uh, you know, just a uh, few basic things is that uh, the Epnetics is going to take a different throttle control. It's not going to have the, uh, the external contactor. It's got it built in. And so, um, and it's liquid cooled. You can run them just air cooled, but they have limited capacity then also. That's the big difference between the Curtis and the Evnetics, is that the Curtis is a 500 amp controller, and so is the Evnetics, the uh, Soliton Junior, that is. And the Curtis is good at 500 amps for two minutes. And so, I forget what it is uh, continuously, but it's a fraction of the 500. I think it's 230 or something like that, 190 or something. It, it, it's much, much less continuous um, than it is, of course, um, for that two minutes. Well, the Avnetics is good up to 650 amps for a short period of time. And when liquid cooled, it's 500 amps continuous. So that's all great, but the real, I think where the rubber really meets the road is the fact that the Curtis is working hard to perform the way I described earlier. The Evnetics will take it in stride. And so for the little extra investment, you have a controller that is going to do what you want it to do, and it will do it without um, a detrimental effect to its longevity. And so we're going to pull this out and show you what, uh, what's involved in making that transition. In this particular vehicle, what we're going to have to do is we're going to pull the uh, blower off, get it out of our way. We'll drain our uh, coolant out of our cooling system. We'll drop one of the hoses on the, uh, the radi radiator down below. It's the, our low point and uh, drain it out there. Um, and then we will disconnect our throttle. We have a terminal strip here on the left. All these wires on the bottom stay with the vehicle. And so we will disconnect those wires, disconnect uh, our power and charger connections going to uh, the board here, and then that unbolts and comes out as a unit. And we showed you that when we did the chill plate installation. So we'll show you that again. And then we've got another heat sink, or another piece of aluminum that we will notch as it has to be done here on that new piece, put our uh, mounting holes in it, and then the rest of it, the layout will be uh, 
reconfigured for the Evnetics controller, um, including the throttle layout and so forth. So there's accommodations that will be made, and if you stay with us, we'll, we'll share that with you. Well, here's the uh, heat sink component board out of the vehicle. It just disconnected things from those that uh, stayed in the vehicle, and the rest of it comes out. Like I said, we disconnect uh, the bottom row of wires at our terminal strip. Those are uh, wires that come from the vehicle that come to the components on the board. So it's, you know, somewhat plug and play. I mean, uh, this is fairly heavy, lift out, and that kind of thing. But it's not a big deal. You can do it by yourself. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to strip this down. And then we'll use this uh, heat sink for a template for our new one. And uh, at least for the mounting holes. And then we're going to lay out where we want the new components. So we'll give you kind of a little close-up of this, the back side, and the engine bay of the Carmagia with this missing. So here's a little close-up of the uh, component board heat sink. Here's the chill plate that we added. And so there's no signs uh, on the outside of this thing to show that there was excessive heat or that uh, there was a catastrophic failure. It just stopped working. So something opened up inside. And uh, so if anybody's interested in a used <laughs> Curtis controller for whatever reasons you can email us and we'll make arrangements to see that you have all the fun you want with it we've had our fun with it and uh, we're moving on so here's the engine bay the motor with the blower removed uh, we disconnected the one side panel there that has the um, coolant reservoir mounted to it so we can pull the heat sink out without disconnecting the hoses to the reservoir. We did have to disconnect the hoses to the chill plate. Um, so that's that's the status there. So next we'll be tearing apart the existing heat sink and laying out our new one. Stay with us. Well, here it is, stripped of the wiring to the point where we're just ready to remove the components. And uh, so we continue with that. Then we'll clean this off and use this for the template for the new board. Well, there's the back of the Curtis controller. It wipes the heat sink grease. There's the uh, plate without anything on it, spot where the controller was. We've marked our mounting holes that will be reused on the new plate. Not many of them since it's going to be kind of redesigned except for where it mounts into the vehicle. That was the back side. Of course, again, the heat sink grease um, that stayed on the uh, heat sink after we pulled off the chill plate. This chill plate worked really well. Just was not, you know, sufficient enough for that Curtis. 
And I don't know if you could have one quite sufficient enough. Um, really needs to be internally liquid cooled as the Evnatics is. And we'll be, uh, we'll be installing that uh, hopefully tomorrow. Should be coming in UPS tomorrow, I think. And uh, so we'll have the board ready. And we can design our layout and get that thing back in for the weekend. This is uh, Wednesday afternoon right now. A little simple green and a shop towel. Got the heat sink nice and clean. Ready to use as a template for the next one. The uh, Curtis controller, except for some uh, a little bit of residue there on the back side of uh, the heat sink grease. I mean, it looks new and out of the box. Incredible. Look at that. So, not like some of them I've uh, heard about. We've never had one fail before. So, kind of interesting to have one do it. Uh, do it while you're driving and know one of the symptoms, I guess. I've heard some of them being fairly catastrophic. But this one uh, just opened up internally, and so time for a replacement. Our board's clean and ready for a uh, use as a template for the next one. We'll drill the holes. Those will go without saying, but we need to set the uh, Evnetics on here and see if we're going to have a conflict with our mounting holes um, Just to see exactly where this is going to fit. We know where our throttle pulley comes through and So basically with the uh, Evnetics throttle we need to be in line with that pulley So our throttle is going to be there Grab that show it to you real quick here so it would have to go in this neighborhood here, like that. So that lever is in line with our pulley. So we'll see. Um, have to look up the dimensions for the uh, Soliton Junior and see if we're going to have an issue. I, I think we are. They're pretty good sized controllers. Uh, and so we'll see what modifications need to be, be done and then we'll show you uh, that uh, mounted and then we'll talk a little more in detail about the, uh, the uh, difference in electrical connections uh, for the Evnetics versus the Curtis. So. We'll, we'll be uh, working on that tomorrow, hopefully, when the controller comes in. We'll see you then.